welcome back to my bench. Today we have something rather simple. This here is a symmetric stereo amplifier and these guys have been around for a very very long time. This particular one is in my AM studio but since we well we're doing some upgrades to the to the studios and stuff and we've decided one of the things we're going to keep is these amplifiers, these symmetric amplifiers, because quite frankly they do a good job and it's all we really need in there. And so we're going to keep them and to that end I'm going to recap them. I just thought it'd be fun to see what's inside one of these things and what we do as a, just the way that we do these things uh, for, for studio use. As you can tell, it's got left and right uh, controls, a uh, little clip LEDs here for the things clipping, stereo headphone output, and an on-off switch. <laughs> That's about all that's on the front of this. Uh, no meters, no nothing. So let's look at the back. And in the back, we've got fuse, line cord. This says that it had new, yeah, it's time, new electrolytic capacitors were replaced. 2000 so 19 years ago almost exactly uh, the outputs for this thing are just regular binding post speaker terminal outputs uh, or you could use you know those push in jacks we just have bare wires going into them uh, the inputs you can either use um, quarter inch which are balanced, the, the quarter inch signals, no, the quarter inch, all quarter inch signal connectors are unbalanced, so these are unbalanced inputs, and you've got balanced inputs on the XLRs, and a push button here for mono or stereo, in which case you use the mono, normally use channel 1 for mono, which this one says, for mono you use channel 1, and that'll bring it out both speakers with this little push button. We do actually have stereo in the studios for AM, even though we don't broadcast AM studio or AM stereo. We still have the, I think we got the pilot going, but that's the pilot on the uh, stereo, just in case somebody has a stereo receiver in their car at home and will turn, uh, turn on the stereo light and broaden it out a little bit. And it does sound better. AM stereo sounds better, but yeah, eh, it never made it. Um, and if you're going to do a mono output to the speakers, you do one speaker connected across the two two pluses here. That's about all that's in it on the on the outside of it. So on the inside, bring it down a little bit. We have not much. These guys, like I said, these have been around for a while. Uh, and you can tell it's been in service its whole life. It's just it just sat there and ran. Big old monster transformer over here. Uh, I think these things are 20 watts RMS per channel. I think I'm not real sure. It's but uh, to drive the whole mess, it's got an STK 465 stereo amplifier chip, all on the chip amplifier. Uh, a couple fuses, one for either side of the the line, uh, the out output line um, for the amplifier here, and some capacitors. That this is what we're going to change. The guy that did this last did a really nice job and glued these down very well, uh, and changed a lot. He changed. Uh, I think these two are changed. These are changed definitely. I do not believe these little guys here have been changed. But if you look real close, you can tell how long this thing's actually been in service. Come on, focus. These uh, diodes here get nice and hot. <laughs> They're really nice and hot, and they burnt the board, actually. Um, there. That's normal. That's the way it works. So... It's got, and one other thing it has is a lot of these, see this guy here, where am I pointing at, right here, those are jumpers, zero ohm jumpers, and they're all over the place. It's funny, with almost nothing on this board, you'd think the engineers have been able to do a single-sided board that didn't take 
jumpers all over the place. But anyway, that's the that's what it looks like on the inside. And basically, all I'm going to do is change the uh, change the the caps on it. Like I said, they're 19 years old. And since we're going to keep it in in service, we may as well change them. And I ordered a big box of capacitors for this because, well, I didn't have all the ones I wanted. Of course, you never have what you want, especially since I've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven of these to do. Pretty, all the seven studios have them. And what we got here, yeah, got a pile of 6,800, 35 volts. They're not exactly the same as what's in here. They're a little smaller. Uh, and I couldn't, actually couldn't get um, uh, radials for these, these 6,800s. They don't come in radials, but that's what... That's what was in here before. Radials are hard to find anymore. Let's see, what is this? Uh, this is 220 at 16 volts. A uh, whole mess of 4.7s at 50. Um, 100 at 35. A few of those. And 47s at 50. A bunch of those. So. Now, I guess what I really need to do is look and see that they back order anything on me. That'll always nice. Back ordered. Zero, zero. Zero. Yay, no back orders. Anyhow. And with all these caps, I went with Rubicons. Um, if. And except for one, I couldn't get Rubicons. I had to go with uh, something else. Let's see, that's Rubicon. That's Rubicon. That's Rubicon. That's Rubicon. I guess I did get all Rubicons. Okay, well, anyhow. So, I'm not going to make you watch me do all of this. Uh, I'll turn off the uh, camera, pull the board out, and we'll take a look at that. And, you know, once I get it out of here. This has those weird little um, uh, XLRs that you have to stick the screwdriver, a little bitty screwdriver in and unlock them so they come out. Which is a good thing too because if you look at it, these uh, XLR connectors are <laughs> riveted to the case. So, anyhow. So I'll get this thing out. I'll be back. Oh, there's one other thing I wanted to show you before I get started here. Um, in order to get these things out of here, of course, i got to take the pots off. But I uh, I made a little set. I printed these on my 3D printer. A little set of um, uh, nut ex extractors uh, that, for taking the, the nuts off of pots like this. Um, these, this one here, these are SAEs, but this is close enough to 10 millimeters that it'll work. This is a metric set. I gotta make an SAE set too, unfortunately. But basically, they're really nice. You just, this fits over the top of the shaft, and you unscrew it like that, and you don't scratch up the front. Isn't that cool? Let's see, and will this one fit over here, or is that that weird 5 sixteenths? No, and it'll fit over here on this one too, but I don't need to take that off. But anyway, but uh, these, uh, I, <laughs> I just downloaded the, the set for this, but I made the little plate that holds them. Um, I designed this, and it, it, it just has little, little holds that go, match the uh, inside of those things, and Nice little set. It'll save your face plates if you're doing work for people. So, there you go. That that's, takes about four hours to print them. Okay, so the board's out. Here it is. Um, I had to take the front off. I didn't realize I had to do that, but I do. Uh, first thing I noticed is <laughs> there is no grease. 
no heat transfer grease on the back of this STK465. I would think there would have been. Well, there's going to be when I put it back. Evidently, it doesn't make a heck of a lot of difference considering it's been in service like this forever. Bring this in a little bit here. Alright, so hey, you can see it's been pretty pretty hot. It's pretty much charcoal this area here. I don't it's not it hasn't actually eaten through it. It's definitely gotten warm in several spots though. We'll have to check and see. Touch up the soldering joints around here. Um looks like some of the soldering has been well, there's one right there um, looks like some of the pieces here have been uh, kind of touched up by somebody if we can get in here come on focus yeah look at this see there's a little jumper going over from there to there and from there to there I wonder what those are yeah when they took those caps out, that's this this capacitor here. When they took the caps out, they broke the trace and had to use the capacitor lead to flare over to the trace. Hmm. There's some here that don't look so good. Uh, here's one here. Where am I? Hello. Yeah. Um, you can't really see that, but it's got a little bit of a halo around it. And yeah, we'll be touching up some solder joints here. It's got a nice... If you look over here, this is a good way of doing this. Uh, bringing grounds all back to one spot. Star grounding them. That's nice. I like that. It... Uh, kind of more important uh, in RF I believe than it is here but uh, in RF you yeah, I don't know anyway but star grounds star grounds are good there they quiet things down a little bit and uh, sure can't tell where to pick up a ground if you need one that's for sure anyhow capacitor change in time I'll be back Okay, so I'm all done putting in the caps. Um, I had, uh, well, I mean, I didn't, I was, basically I just put in all the caps and tested it out, and well, here we go. Let's see what happens when I turn it on. Okay, so we got noise, and I've got the input on one side here. There's one side. There's the other side. And they're about exactly even. Now, you'll notice something. These don't do anything. At all. I do that on purpose. This is going to be in a studio, an air studio. <clears throat> and if there are knobs, people will turn them. So, what I do is I bypass these guys. These particular ones are 100K. So I bypass them with uh, 47K on either side to center so that the things are signed, lined up the way I want them and fairly evenly. Um, and that way people twisting knobs can't make it. And they, I do that to almost all my amplifiers and preamplifiers and things because I learned a long time ago that if you present people with twisty things, they'll twisty them. That's why all my microphone preamps, uh, equalizers, and all that stuff, they've got too many knobs on them, and I can't just bypass them all because I want to be able to set them, but they're all behind plexiglass covers with safety screws in the front, so people can't get in there and mess with them. So I did this way, it's easy. Just set it up the way I want it, feed it into the board, known levels that I know what they are, and everybody's happy, and Leave the things on the, leave them on here, leave the pots on here, <coughs> so they can twisty turny them and think they're doing themselves some good or something, and they're not, <laughs> which is fine. Uh, that I, I just don't tell them. Don't you tell them either. Anyway, uh, as it turned out, 
These guys are still fine. They were replaced in 2000. They're okay. Um, but I changed them anyway. Uh, these hundreds, these here are uh, 220 at 35. What the book calls for is 220 at 16. These were replaced in 2000, but they're basically no names. I have no idea who they are. They're Japan. That's all I can tell. Um, and they're bad. They're both measuring about 40 to 60 ohms ESR. These little guys here were not replaced in, two, in 2000, and they are all definitely bad. Uh, they're very low. These are 47. They're measuring about 20, 15 to 20, and 0.14K, or 140 ohms resistance, which is my little meter. That's all it'll do. These are all bad, and this, this is a 100 at 40. Shows you how old it is. We don't even have 40 anymore. Um, and it is about 50 microfarads and about 35 ohms resistance. Uh, and all these 4.7s that are in here, these little guys back here, there's like half a dozen of them here. All of these are very high uh, in resistance, uh, in uh, ESR also. And they're all bad as far as they're way out of tolerance. So they didn't change these caps. This one, this one, this one, any of these. Uh, in 2000 when they fixed it or replaced the caps in it, or these guys here uh, they didn't replace any of those and they're all bad so anyway now it works uh, there's one channel there's the other channel works good all right well uh, six more to go I won't bore you with those but anyway yeah this STK 465 that's a pretty good little chip I put some goo under it uh, to make sure that it stays in here. People say they have problems with these, but as long as you don't short the outputs or mess with the inputs too badly uh, or overdrive them, they're just fine, as is evidenced by something that's been working now for 20-some years. Uh, I can't tell what the date code is on this because the only chip in it that would have a date code has been changed I know it's serial number 9148, so it's got to be a while ago. That's all I can tell you. Seattle, Washington. All right, well, there's one of the Symmetrics A220 amplifiers ready to go back into service for another 20 years. Thanks for watching. Make sure you sign up, uh, you know, in the... Push that like button if you like it. That really does help a lot. And I love reading comments. So make comments. I mean, not much comment on this, but make comments. Thanks for watching.